This is Eric, owner of the Rusher Rabbit, here today to talk to you about alternators and charging systems. The charging system on a Volkswagen Rabbit is simplistic, and yet, after 20 years of service, some hitting close to 30 years of service, they're disasters. Volkswagens that I find for sale used, one of the first things the person usually tells me is the battery won't hold the charge, sometimes it won't start, the battery runs down. They've had to replace the alternator six or seven times in the last two years, and that's why they're getting rid of it. The list goes on and on. Anyway, here's the reason why. The wiring system on the Volkswagen Rabbit, any years between 75 and 84, is notorious for having issues. Corrosion, lighting problems, power problems, fuse box problems, battery problems, cable problems, or alternator problems, or even belt problems are all going to give you issues with your Rabbit's alternator charging system. Why? Well, because they all have an effect. The first thing we're going to look at is the most simple thing in a Volkswagen alternating system, the belt. You may have underestimated the importance of having a tight belt, but a belt with more than a half inch of deflection in it is liable to cause you poor charging or no charging whatsoever. So let's take a look at the belt real quick and I'll show you what's the proper way to tighten a belt and what's the proper way to check a belt for deflection. Simply put, this is alternator deflection. You're checking for your belt deflection. That means how far, when you stick your finger on your belt, will that go down. You want one half an inch in either direction. As you can see, this one is properly done. One half an inch in either direction. That is a tight belt. If your belt has more play than that, do it again. So your belt has proper deflection, or you've adjusted it and you're still not getting good alternator output, what do you try next? Well, sip on a beer, and hop in your car. Don't drive it. What you're checking for next is that your alternator light is working. What an alternator light is, is more of a check, you know, if your alternator goes bad, not all the time your light's going to come on. If you throw a belt, yeah, sure, your light will come on and let you know you've thrown a belt. And you better pull over quick, because most water pumps on Volkswagens are ridden off that alternator belt, which means you'll overheat your car long before your battery goes dead. Anyway, back to the point. That light has to come on when you turn the key on. Not start the car, but just turn the key on. If it doesn't come on, it's called a stator. What's going on there is power is going through that wire. And if you're not getting a ground through that wire, it's not going to work. The alternator will never know that it's time to start charging. It's an exciter wire is what we call it in, the, in at work, but uh, you know I don't know the official word for it. Anyway, what you want to do is hop in your car, like we're going to do in a second, turn the key on. Make sure that light comes on when the key's on. You fire up that car, that light should stay on or go off very shortly after starting. Some models, you have to rev the engine up to 2,000 RPMs before the light goes off. Others will turn off the second the alternator starts turning. It's entirely up to the model and the alternator manufacturer. Let's uh, take a look. Alright, with the key off, the light should be off. When you turn the key to on, that alternator light had better light up. When the car starts, that light should turn back off. Like I said before, on some models, it'll wait until the car is at 2,000 RPMs before it turns off. On other ones, it'll turn off right after starting. Now, if that light came on when you turned on the car and went off when you started the car, you can basically rule out a problem with the dashboard or the wiring to it. But you can't rule out any of the other millions of problems that can happen in a wiring system on a Rabbit. So where do you go from here? Well, first of all, let's deal with what happens if that light doesn't come on when you start the car. you got one or two problems. The wire going from that wire, exciter wire, off the back of the alternator and going to your dashboard is no longer functioning properly. There's a short in it, there's a break in it, or the dashboard itself has malfunctioned. Hell, maybe the bulb's gone out. A simple thing like that bulb going out will cause your rabbit not to charge. So check it. If the bulb is okay, Here's something your next step is going to be. Get a multimeter and hook it up to your battery. Fire up the car. When you read the reading on that multimeter, you want to see a reading of about 13.8, a high of 14.2 maybe, and a low of 12.8.
12.8 means you've got a weak system, but you can still drive around and happily ever after with a 12.8 system. But anyway, the optimal range is 13.8 volts. You don't need an amp gauge for this test, by the way. Just a regular old Radio Shack amp meter. You can go to uh, Northern Hydraulic or uh, Harbor Freight. They sell them for about five bucks, and they're well worth the money. The test light won't work in this case because the light will light up as long as there's more than 12 volts, and you need to know in what range you're talking about here. So, let's, let's check that voltage. You've started your car, you hook your voltmeter up to it, and you're getting a reading of, say, 11.1 volts. Even if your light on the uh, dash came on and went off when you started the car, your alternator's not putting out anything. Could be several factors. The belt, which we've already checked, could be what's called a brush pack. Brushes right against the alternator and makes constant contact. Over time, they wear, and when they wear, they wear out. When they no longer have the tension needed to touch that alternator, you'll get a no charging situation, but you'll still have that light coming on. Now, you can't easily replace the brush packs on most standard issue Volkswagen alternators. Some of the aftermarket ones, however, have the brush packs as an external pack. Two screws, it's out, you check it. If it's less than an eighth of an inch in thickness, it's no good, you replace it, you're back on the road. However, with the most styles that you have, there's no way to test it, so we don't want to go throwing that thing out and replacing it. So the next step you want to do to make sure that the alternator is charging and that it's not an issue is you want to get a wire, you want to make a wire, a piece of wire, you want to connect that to a 12 volt bulb. Any bulb you got laying around is good. From that bulb you want to go to ground. You take that bulb wire and you put one end on ground and the other end on the stator wire of your alternator. Now go fire up your car. When you turn the key on that bulb should light up just like the one on your dash used to. When you fire up that car it should go out. Now check the battery power again. Are you getting voltage? Are you getting better voltage, more than 11? If you're getting voltage and you weren't before, that means that somewhere in that system you've got a break going on there and it's not good. It's really not good. Anyway, the good news is it's safe to drive that car with that little bulb sitting in there for a long, long time. The bad news is it's not the right way to do it, so you better do it the right way. The right way is to find the short and fix it. Give me a moment, please hot here in Rusty Rabbit in July, I'll tell you what. North Carolina, the south, the humidity. Whew. It's hairy Norwegian types, we don't get into that. Anyway, alternators, and here's how the next situation is going to work out. You can have a perfectly good alternator, a perfectly good wiring harness, and a perfectly crappy battery, and it'll give you the same results. If you have a battery with a shorted or dead cell, it's going to give you the same effect. That alternator can be throwing all the power and all the voltage in the world at it. If it's busted, and it can't take it, it will read that it's bad. When you turn off your car and go to start it again, you won't get anything because that battery is bad. No matter how hard that system's been charging, it's still going to be dead. So, the battery is always a concern. There's no easy way to test the battery to see if it's dead. You can try charging it for several hours with a manual electric charger, and it might not hold the charge, and then in which case it's, it's, it's gone. You know, Some will take a charge, but they'll bleed off in the next 24 hours. And some would just be dead outright. With professional equipment, you can test a battery, but that's called a pile, a load condition, where you're actually throwing amperage at that battery to see if it can maintain the same voltage at a certain amount of amperage. The equivalent of maybe starting your car, basically. Your starter draws heavy amperage, and that's why it has the thickest cable in the car. And if the battery can't start your car, well, then what good is it? So it's a possibility that even a new battery or a six-month-old battery has gone bad. Batteries today, 90% of them, are actually made out of recycled parts. They're reusing them because lead and acid is not a very easily disposed of material. They have a process of reverse osmosis where they clean the lead plates, put new electrolyte substance into the batteries, fix the cases if they need to be, and, and resell the damn things. So even the high-dollar batteries may be able to be rebuilt in which case there's a, uh, you know, a, a room for error, basically. So, it's something to think about. What else could be wrong with your rabbit? Why is it the charging system charges fine on your particular rabbit, but then the next day the damn battery's dead? The battery seems fine, you put a charge on it and it's okay, but you leave the car sitting for four or five days and it's dead. 
That's what's called a parasitic drain or a key off draw. And that means when you take the key out of your car and you go inside for the night and you go have a few beers and some other stuff, you come back out the next day and your car is slow to turn over, hell, it won't turn over at all. You think you got a bad battery, so the first step you do is you buy a new battery, you put that in. Oh, that's great for a day or two, but then after a couple of weeks, the same problem resurfaces and you can't figure it out. Your alternator belt's tight, your light's working, you've checked the charging voltage and everything checks out okay. What does this mean for me? I'll tell you what it means, you got a key off drain. The key off drain is what occurs when after you pull out the key and go inside for the night, you still got amperage and voltage being drawn from that system into something. Could be a relay that's stuck on. Could be a stereo system that doesn't have an off switch. Could be an amp that's not being un, uh, you know, unplugged when you turn off the car for the evening. Could be a lot of things. Volkswagens, luckily, don't have a whole lot of uh, aftermarket systems like power windows or power locks or uh, power seats or climate control brains or anything like that. Most of them have no brain at all, and that's a good thing. Most likely, when you turn off your key and you go inside for the night, the things that might stay powered on would be uh, a headlight relay or a fuel pump relay or a wiper relay or a, a seatbelt warning buzzer, you know, that it's not buzzing, but it, it, can, it can be charged. And as long as it's energized, it's drawing amperage. The way to check the amperage draw is with a multimeter. Sorry, but there's no way around it. There's a cheap way to check if you've got a huge draw, pull the negative battery cable off your battery, and touch it to it a few times, you see large sparks jumping off that thing, or blue sparks, you got to draw with the key off. But uh, that, that's, that's a pretty half-assed way of checking it. The real way to check it is with that multimeter you just bought from uh, Northern Hydraulic or Radio Shack or, or, or Sears or wherever you get one. Like it's a 10 to uh, $15 investment. I've got one here, $4.95. You know, you get them on sale at these you know, things. You go to a flea market or something, and they're pretty cool. What you want to check for is amperage. So the way to check for a key off draw you want to pull the negative battery cable off the car with the key off. Pull it off the car. Now take one of your probes and put it to the battery cable. Take the other probe and put it to the battery terminal. With a meter set on amperage, you're going to see what draw is going through that system. If you turn the headlights on, you're going to see that draw jump up 10, 15, 20 amps, you know, with various accessories turned on, the wipers with lights and so on and so forth. But with the key off, and the key out of the car, and you out of the car, and no lights are on, no fans are on, no wipers are on, that car should pull less than a tenth of an amp. It sounds like a little amount of power when, in the grand scheme of things when a starter takes 60, 70 amps, some of them 300, 400 for a diesel. But on a Volkswagen, if there's a tenth of an amp or more, it's going to draw that battery down and more you know, quickly than, than you can imagine. So you've got to draw. Finding the draw, I'm sorry, I could spend four hours. I could easily spend four hours trying to walk you through each step of finding a draw. It's a wiring problem somewhere. You have a relay sticking on, you have a relay sticking on, you have a headlight switch broken, you have a turn signal switch messed up, you have a short somewhere. Easiest way to start is to pull the fuses one at a time and look for a change in that draw. If it goes from a tenth of an amp or two tenths of an amp, to 0.03 to 0.04 amps. That's what you're looking for. Now you have which fuse that was, that's your circuit, that circuit's the one that has the problem. It eases the fault tracing process. Still takes hours. I do this stuff for a living, I'm a mechanic, and I'm telling you, it takes hours sometimes. Some days, it's easy, you get it quick, you figure out exactly what's going on, somebody's left the dome light on or the trunk light's stuck on, you're in and out, no problem. Other times, it's a problem like a, you know a preheater for the damn turbocharger, and that stuff takes hours to work out because a lot of that stuff is non-documented. So anyway, I've given you some of the heads up on alternator and charging problems on a Volkswagen Rabbit. I hope this is helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know I did. Hell, I've had three beers just making it. And take it from me, Eric, owner of the Rusty Rabbit. Your Volkswagen Rabbit is worth the effort and trouble. Fault trace it. Fix it. Drive it.